so my name is Rob Ruiz. I am uh, the lead organizer of the group WP Omaha, which is the website that you see right now, WPOmaha.org. Uh, we are uh, Nebraska's only open source community learning group for all things WordPress. So we are the local WordPress community group. Uh, we meet a couple times a month. Um, and then we also hold a yearly, well, except for this year, uh, normally we would be doing our yearly WordPress convention in about a week, um, maybe a little more than a week from now. I think we are going for the 29th, uh, but obviously that has all been canceled because of COVID, unfortunately. So stay tuned for next year, where hopefully we have better luck with uh, global pandemics, and then we can actually hold conventions in person where people get together and meet and hear intelligent people talk about all sorts of things related to online marketing, online e-commerce, website stuff, web development, uh, just all things WordPress. It's a yearly WordPress convention. Um, yeah, so uh, so if you're interested in learning more about WordCamp, uh, let's see, last year's website is 2019.omaha.wordcamp.org. And, uh, and then you can also use this kind of convention of the year type thing and look up 2018's website, 2017 website, and you can see all the different talks that we had and the people that spoke and what they spoke about. And then uh, we also have a YouTube channel. Um, so we've got a couple YouTube channels for learning WordPress here in Omaha. Uh, although obviously you could, you know, watch YouTube videos from all over the world. But if you want to like, support your local community groups. Uh, WP Omaha has a, a YouTube channel of our own uh, where you can watch video playbacks of some of our meetups. Um, and then uh, there's also a WordCamp Omaha YouTube channel where you can see uh, videos of talks that have been given at previous WordCamps on a variety of topics. Uh, so there's no shortage of learning material out there. It's even related, you know, even specifically from Omaha. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, and then, of course, a little bit about me, other than the fact that I lead this group. Um, I'm also a full-time WordPress developer. I work for a company here in town called Proxybid. And uh, so I develop WordPress plugins that do all, that make WordPress do all sorts of crazy things that WordPress doesn't do right out of the box. But I did at one time start, like everybody else uh, that is attending this uh, little meeting, uh, where I didn't know anything about WordPress. And so it was all at first about learning how to use the WordPress admin and how WordPress works and, and how to get a site up and running and, and all these great things. Um, and so once I got through all of that, then I wanted to dive deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And so then I got to customizing themes and then building my own custom plugins. And then now I make WordPress do all sorts of crazy things. And I build systems that build WordPress sites automatically and so on and so forth. It's, it gets kind of crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm very far down the rabbit hole. So if you have any questions uh, about anything related to WordPress, whether it's WordPress development, web design, web development, um, you know, WordPress admin, SEO, anything like that, uh, we'll, I'll save some time at the end of this for anybody to ask any questions. Otherwise, uh, we'll go ahead and jump into uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and jump into it essentially. Now, um, I do do another talk um, about like uh, 10 things to, you know, 10 problems to avoid when you first start using WordPress. And for that one, I do have a slideshow. However, for this first talk, there's really no slideshow. Uh, so I'm not really a slideshow kind of guy. So if you're hoping to get slides, I'm sorry, I apologize. Um, but for this one, we don't do any slides. I just talk a bunch and then you guys listen and I show off the admin area. We'll talk a little bit about hosting environments. Um, we'll talk about the difference between wordpress.com and wordpress.org and, uh, and just kind of give you all the information you need to get up and running in a WordPress site so that you can start uh, fiddling around with WordPress and start building your own website, making it do all sorts of fun stuff. Um, so, uh, we won't be working on this website. I just wanted to show this off so that people know where to find more information about us. You can also contact us from here. Um, and then you can see videos. We have a blog that has no blog content, unfortunately, as nobody has time to write it. And then, uh, you know, if you have, if you want to request a topic for future meetups, or if you're interested in uh, joining other meetups in the future, um, you know, you can feel free to, uh, 
let's see, do we have a link to our meetup group on here? That would be weird if we didn't. I mean, usually you can click on the events, but I don't know if there is a meetup.com link on here other than those. We should probably put one there. But if you just go to meetup.com slash WP Omaha, uh, you can sign up for the service for free. If you've never heard of meetup.com, uh, that would be surprising to me at this point. It's been around for a long time. Um, you know, you can find meetups about all kinds of things, um, but we use it for our WordPress community group and we've got 859 members. Uh, so if you want to help us get to 900, go ahead and join, create an account on meetup.com and join our group. And then you'll be getting emails about when we, you know, when we create new events and then you can join the events and find out about them and check out our past events and all that jazz. Cool. So let's talk about actual WordPress. Uh, so what you're seeing right now is a WordPress instance that I have spun up locally on my computer. So it's not one that you guys can all go out to the internet. So if you guys try to type in this URL at the top of my browser here, do-space.local, you're not going to get anything. It's gonna give you like a 404 or something like that. Um, there's gonna be nothing there. But for me, it actually sends me to this local environment that I have spun up uh, using this cool tool called Local by Flywheel. And this tool is interestingly enough, developed right here in Omaha by uh, a WordPress hosting company called Flywheel. Um, so we're all about supporting local community and, and, and helping local businesses. And so uh, they're a great business. It's a great hosting platform for Flywheel. And this tool, uh, Local by Flywheel, has quickly become, in my opinion, and many other people's opinions, the go-to for spinning up local instances of WordPress. And it's completely free. Uh, so I don't know. I don't remember exactly what the URL is to get to that, but local by flywheel if we just google that I'm sure we'll get uh, deal with that. this is a blog post though i want like an actual page to go download it aha here we are yeah boom so yeah, so if you just go to getflywheel.com, you'll eventually navigate your way there because if you go into products, I'm sure eventually you'll find it in here somewhere. Um, but yeah, so this is a cool tool uh, that you can download for free that allows you to spin up WordPress sites on your local computer. And here's a bunch of other ones. Now, um, obviously this doesn't do you any good if you're trying to spin up a website, you need to have your WordPress instance hosted on a server somewhere that's accessible by the rest of the world so that when you type in a URL, www.mycoolwebsite.com, it goes to your WordPress site. Um, so that's kind of the next step. So basically what local is, is it's more for like design and development of websites before you push them out to a hosting platform, out to a server where then other people can access it. Um, but it's a cool tool that allows you to get up and running with WordPress for free um, and play with it at least on your own computer. So it's worth knowing about for that reason alone and also worth knowing about so that you guys know what it is that we're interacting with here when I'm showing off uh, the admin area and uh, the front end of the website. That is me, by the way, if you wanna know what I look like, that's me. I just put a picture on there because this is from my last demo. Um, yeah, so that's that. And actually, if you wanted to look at what it would really look like, uh, brand new right after you install it, we would need to go to themes and then we will just activate uh, the 2020 theme. And then now that we have that activated, if I refresh this page, you will see, boom, this is what it looks like when you first spin up uh, a website, more or less. I mean, you, you still have to go through setting up some things or whatever. I didn't, I didn't create a brand new uh, WordPress site just for this demonstration. Uh, this is one that I did for a previous one, uh, but you guys get the idea. Um, and, and we'll go through all the settings and how I got to this point here soon. Um, but yeah, so, um, so yeah, so let's leave it on that theme for now. And then, uh, but let's talk a little bit about, um, the hosting side of things because it is important. Uh, hosting is probably one of the more important parts of, uh, your WordPress site. This website right here, this WP Omaha site, it would be weird if we had a WP Omaha website that was not actually built on WordPress. That would be quite embarrassing. So yeah, uh, obviously this site is built on WordPress. 
and it is hosted on uh, Flywheel. Flywheel is a sponsor of our group, and so we are we thank them uh, for giving us that and being a sponsor of ours and hosting our website uh, on Flywheel. And uh, there's many places to host your website. Uh, I'll talk about some. Um, I'll talk about some that are specific to WordPress. Um, now, many people have heard of GoDaddy. Uh, that is an option. Um, they have a WordPress hosting option. I personally have become less and less uh, impressed by this solution um, over the years, but it is a very popular solution. So, so that's the thing. It would be weird for me to not point that out. Um, a lot of people have heard of Bluehost. Um, you know, there's, there's a HostGator. There's a whole bunch of them out there. I mean, if you just Google WordPress hosting, uh, you know, you, you'll come up with something. And you, it's best to look specifically for WordPress hosting, not like just basic, you know, web hosting or website hosting, right? If we type in website hosting here, we're going to get a bunch of companies to come up. And, uh, and a lot of these do have web, like WordPress support and WordPress specific hosting. Uh, but then you also get the stuff like Wix, which is not WordPress related. And, uh, and we'll talk about the difference between Wix and WordPress here soon. And then uh, Bl uh, Bluehost does, uh, uh, website.com does. Host. Most of these are gonna have WordPress specific hosting, but there are specific uh, hosting companies like Flywheel um, that specialize in nothing but WordPress. They only host WordPress sites. That's their specialty and they do it better than a lot of these companies. Uh, so one of those is SiteGround. Um, SiteGround is a WordPress hosting company um, that does a great job. I'm a huge fan of SiteGround. Um, and then of course, there's also WP Engine, which is another good hosting company. So again, we're talking about, when we're talking about hosting for those that don't quite understand, we're talking about uh, a server somewhere on the internet that you guys pay a monthly fee or sometimes a yearly fee to um, basically have your WordPress installation hosted on their server. It's kind of like a lease, a, a, a little mini lease, uh, like leasing a building or something, except not nearly as expensive. Uh, you're just leasing a computer somewhere out in digital, you know, area USA or somewhere, probably in Silicon Valley. And you lease a small part of a computer that has your website on it that basically whenever somebody types in your URL, like wpomaha.org, uh, you know, it sends the, the traffic to that server, that server gets the request and then says, okay, cool, boom, here's your response. And the response is what WordPress puts together for you. So, uh, so what is WordPress? Let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, WordPress is a content management system. And so its main job is to allow you to uh, manage content, obviously. And what, we're, what we mean by content is stuff like images, text, pages, um, blog posts, could be uh, pages about your company, uh, could be videos, could be all kinds of things. Um, and so uh, what this, how this all works is a combination of HTML, CSS, PHP, and a database. And so all the content that you put into your website, um, so for instance, like if I go to pages, I'll see a list of all my pages. Um, when I go to my homepage, you can see kind of what I've done to, uh, to get to a point where I have uh, a page set up, right? So here's all my content and okay, I've got a list and I've got this picture, right? And, uh, and so this is all like, this is my content. And what happens is when I edit this content, it gets saved into a database that then gets called when people request the page. And then so uh, this is kind of like your input, right? This is like, uh, let's input our content and save it. And then, uh, and then this is our output. So this is like what people see when they go to our website instead of when we go to our website as a site owner and we're like administrating and editing the website itself. Uh, so right here, we're using Elementor. I probably should turn Elementor off actually so that you guys can see what it looks like out of the box. Let's just go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, I think we're putting the carriage before the horse here a bit. I apologize. Uh, so let's just go into plugins. We'll just we'll just deactivate Elementor. Other, let's let's just skip and deactivate. How about that? Boom. Just deactivate the plugin, please. Okay. 
So now if we go into this pages and we go to home, uh, we'll see that we're just in the basic WordPress editor, uh, which is called Gutenberg, by the way. This has recently been revamped in the past couple of years for the first time in 15 years. We have a new editor. It, looks, it used to look way more ugly. Now it looks uh, very sleek and lean and kind of what you see is what you get type of thing, you know? So, uh, so yeah, so here's a picture and here's our list. And of course, that's what we get on our homepage. So, uh, and we'll talk more about the editor here soon. Um, but yeah, so, so this is how it all works. Input, output, and we have complete control in this scenario over all of the code. Um, so if I want to go in here and, you know, customize my theme or create custom plugins and install custom plugins, I can do that because I'm on what's called a self-hosted instance. Um, now, there's a big difference between self-hosting and going to this, wordpress.com, okay? So wordpress.com is also a host. So a lot of people get this confused. And they, uh, they hear, oh, WordPress, I want to use WordPress. I'm going to create a WordPress site. And, uh, and of course, what do they do? They just type in WordPress.com. It sends them here because they're like, whatever, you know, any, any name of any, you know, any product.com and I'll get to their website. And, uh, and they, they go in here and they sign up for whatever, like the services and they'll create a site and they think, okay, cool. This is great. I've like got a WordPress site. Let's go. But what they don't realize is that when you spin up a free WordPress site on WordPress.com, you're not actually using a, it's not the same as a self-hosted WordPress site like this. You still get the ability to log in and use the editor and control your site, but you do not get any kind of access to the file structure. You can't upload, download files. You can't, um, you can't edit current themes. You, there's just a lot of limitations. You can't use any plugin that you want. Um, you can't use any theme that you want. You can only use the plugins and themes that are publicly available in the WordPress repository. So there's, it's very important to be aware of that before you dive in and start trying to create your own website. Do you need a website and, that's and you don't care if it costs money or if it's free and you don't care like what theme you use or what plugins you're going to use or whatever you just want to get a site up and running quick that's fine you can go to wordpress.com and just get that and you'll be probably good with that um however uh if you need a wordpress site that perhaps in either now or in the future might need to do more than all of that um then you'll probably be looking at something like what we refer to in WordPress as a WordPress.org site. So there's WordPress.com and there's WordPress.org. The difference is that WordPress.org is where we go to actually download WordPress as a application, the actual files, the software. This is where we go find out about um, updates to that software and so this is kind of like the open source side of things because WordPress is an open source content management system. So that's the difference. When, when we go to wordpress.org, we're talking about like installing our own WordPress site on our own hosted server. When you go to wordpress.com, you're talking about more of an in the box solution, which is kind of like what I was mentioning earlier uh, with Wix. So you want to talk about like website builders like Wix or Squarespace. Um, yeah, you could build websites on this solution, but here's the difference between WordPress and Wix is that with WordPress, you have control over all of the files, over everything. You can edit, change, update, uh, expand upon anything from the software side of things. And even if you don't know how to, you can hire somebody that can. Okay, if you don't know how. With Wix, you do not have that option. You cannot do that. When you sign up for an account on Wix, this is a website builder. And so it will just build your website and, uh, and then you are limited to whatever tools are available in Wix. And that's it. And the way your site looks, you're limited to how Wix allows you to make your site look. When you're talking about WordPress, I could make a WordPress site look like anything that you can imagine. 
Like you can have a professional designer design a website, give me the design and I can build it to look and behave exactly like you want it to. With Wix, you can't quite do that. Same with Squarespace. You can't quite do that. So although you can great, create great websites on all of these solutions, it's important to know where your limitations are so that you choose the right product for whatever it is that you're trying to build and the goals that you're trying to achieve online. Uh, let me go ahead and take a break real quick. We have a question from Jan McKenzie. Uh, do you use Elementor and recommend it? Yes, I use Elementor on some projects. Sure, I would recommend it, no doubt. Do you need to use Elementor? Um, no, uh, but it is a nice, um, it is a nice solution. Uh, so it's a, it's a page builder. It's what we refer to as a page builder. So it kind of gives you more functionality, more control of how to edit your page. And uh, it's good. It's a well-made page builder. However, there are many other well-made page builders out there to choose from. Uh, so I will say this about Elementor. It is the best free page builder available to WordPress that you can just download and run and be good to go. Um, so that I will say it's the best free one for sure. Um, I don't mind it. I'm not trying to talk down on it. Uh, I think it's great. I, I just have high hopes for uh, Gutenberg, which is the built-in page builder. It's getting better and better all the time. It's, it hasn't been around for very long. Uh, so if people, um, you know, if it takes you a little while to learn this and if you don't like it, you go to a page builder and you like that better, great. Um, but I would say stay hopeful and uh, stay tuned to all the updated, you know, all the changes that they're constantly making to Gutenberg in this page builder. Um, because I do anticipate that being the way of the future. Um, I think a lot of page builders are going to fall by the wayside in the future because they just aren't compatible with each other. And what WordPress needs is the modularity uh, necessary to build pieces of your website and put them wherever you want, regardless of uh who, whose site you're building for what or what license you have for what site or whatever uh, in terms of like paid page builders. Um, yeah. So, um, so just, I would, I would learn Gutenberg first, try Gutenberg for a while. If you don't like it, you get frustrated, go ahead and install uh, Elementor, give that a try. Uh, but they're both great. Um, let's see, I've got another question. I'll answer real quick and then uh, we'll get back to the spiel. So uh, we got a question from J.R. Quinn. I'm a complete novice, although need a page for school. If I get a WordPress.com site, is it an easy transition to a WordPress.org site down the road? Um, I guess it would be, it would depend on your definition of easy. Um, it's not as easy as if you were to just get a hosted um, situation going. Uh, however, I understand that does cost money. Um, so um, the only the only way I know of to like as as uh, seamlessly as possible to transition from a free WordPress.com site to a self-hosted WordPress.org site is to use the um, export import tool that is available in WordPress. So if we go into settings and go down, no, I'm sorry, not settings, tools. Uh, if you go to tools, you'll see import and export. And so when we go to export, we can tell it what we want to export and pick whatever we want, uh, like pages and posts and all this stuff. And it'll download a file that will then allow you to import it into any other WordPress site. So you could like download these files of all the different stuff that you put on your site and then spin up a WordPress, a brand new WordPress.org site, and then import them into the new one and have all of your content. But you would still need to do things like get your theme installed, um, whatever plugins you were using, get those installed in the new instance. And uh, you would just need to like, I guess, configure Word, the new WordPress site like the old WordPress site. And there's no quick and simple way to like, uh, do that configuration. There's like, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, you would have to like go step by step the way you set up your free one through again in the .org. And eventually you would get there. It probably wouldn't take that long. I'm probably making it sound way more complicated than it actually is. 
um, it would just take a little time, no matter what, no matter how good you are at this, it would take a little bit of time to uh, export all your content from the one site, import it into the new site. And there's no like, there's no way to like click one button and say, hey, put it on, you know, go the dot org way or whatever, right? Um, there's just no good way to do that, unfortunately. There are plugins um, out there that allow you to migrate Word, WordPress stuff. Um, so there's a plugin called WP Migrate DB. Uh, yeah, so this this plugin, uh, if you install the plugin on your .com site and on your org site, it will like migrate some of the data for you, uh, which is nice. Um, I don't know how well the free one works, uh, but the pro one costs money and supposedly it does a good job. There's some other tools out there that allow you to migrate uh, data from one WordPress site to another. And so if you use one of those tools, that might make your life easier. Um, I mean, if it's free, you know, if you're just going to like, I would say since it's free, it's always worth giving it a try. Go ahead, spin up your WordPress.com site for free, give it a whirl, see what you think. But I would say after you're doing that for a while, if you're going to use this WordPress site for anything professional, like a professional resume or a, uh, a business or something like that, I would say, um, you know, don't spend too much time on that free version. Go ahead and just switch over to the .org as soon as possible. Um, if it's just something like you said, if you just need a page for school or something, um, you know, you talk about educational purposes, uh, you know, you might be good just on the .com uh, and, and not have to pay any money for it. Uh, I'll have to leave it up to you to go ahead and make that decision. Me personally, when I first got out of school and I needed like a portfolio or whatever to show off what I did, I just went ahead and bought some hosting and spun up a website and put it on WordPress and called it good. So that was, that was what I decided. And it doesn't cost very much money. Uh, you can find some very cheap hosting um, solutions out there. Um, I mean, you have to buy a domain as well, uh, but that, you know, it's, it's not that bad. Maybe $50 a year or something. You might be able to do it for 50 to 75 a year. Uh, that's about, you know, I think that's more than what an Xbox Live, you know, membership costs. So, uh, so yeah, so not that much money in the grand scheme of things. Um, cool. So I'll go ahead and, uh, and keep going on through here. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the WordPress dashboard because this is the thing that you'll log into and, uh, and get up and going real quick. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about like kind of the user interface. And then we'll go into some of the more important parts of uh, kind of what's going on here. So uh, the first thing it's always gonna put you into here is the dashboard. This dashboard is customizable. It's supposed to be meant as like a quick, like, hey, check out what's going on with your WordPress site type of thing. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, me personally, I, for the most part, ignore this page. Um, I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying I personally have not found it very helpful. Uh, I tend to just look at this left side menu over here and navigate around to where all the things are and then go in, dive in and do whatever it is I need to do. So um, we'll just start on this left side and we'll go through all these real quick. I'll quickly explain each one. If you guys have any questions, by all means, go ahead and, uh, and ask. And then uh, and I'll elaborate once we get to like themes and plugins and some of the more complicated um, topics, right? Uh, so the, the simplest one to understand is the post page. Uh, so the post page is basically like your blog area, right? So if you want to have a blog on your website, um, you're going to go to posts and this is where you'll manage all of your blog posts, right? And then you could set up a page on your website like slash blog where it automatically lists all of your blog posts, right? So here's the one blog post that I have. If I want to add another blog post, I can just say add new. And I can say, hey, um, let's see, uh, it's August. Uh, and we still have COVID, okay? So, uh, so, so that's kind of what's on a lot of people's mind right now. And then we could go ahead and write a whole article about how it's taking way, like way too long um, for, uh, all this, uh, madness to, uh, to come to an end. Right. 
And, uh, and so that, and let's just say that's my blog post. Okay. I'll publish that blog post. And then now when we refresh this blog page, we'll see we have a new blog post here and there's my blog post. And if we click on it, it takes me to a page that's only my blog post and then that's it. Okay, cool. So that's the posts area. Uh, and then uh, we can create categories for our blog posts and all sorts of crazy stuff. Yep, so that's that. Uh, the media area, this is basically where we manage our media. It's not just images. Uh, you can manage, uh, you can upload PDFs in here. You can upload videos in here. You can upload audio in here. There's a bunch of stuff you can upload in here, but basically any kind of media you can upload into here and then use anywhere on your website. Um, so if I wanted to add this image, uh, for instance, on this uh, blog post that I just created, uh, I can just say, okay, cool. Um, let me go ahead and add an image after that. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and select one from my media library and then there it is and then i can update and then i can go over here and refresh the page and then you'll see the picture of me in the blog post okay so uh so that's what the media manager is for um just to manage your media pages cool so this is where you actually manage all of your pages for your website um so you can have an infinite amount of pages for your site and then uh, we can edit them all individually and they all get listed in here and you can search for them um, and you could filter them and all this stuff. And so a lot of WordPress sites, you know, if we were on a WordPress site that was like fully built out, there would be a bunch of pages in here. And, uh, and then what we do later uh, is we set up our main navigation, like this stuff up here, we set it up to link to the pages. And then now we've got a fully functioning website that people can navigate around in. Uh, the comments area, not particularly useful unless you're running a blog that you have like a big community around and people, you know, you want it like it gets a lot of activity and a lot of people comment on it, then you might have to go into this comments area and like mess with it. Um, but for the most part, I've, I personally have not worked on a website that uses comments. So I mostly just ignore this tab. But if anybody comments on any of your blog posts, uh, this is where it shows up. Uh, most times, especially on WordPress sites, I find that the comments area ends up just being a place for like hackers and bots to like automatically inject stupid advertisements into your pages and blog posts and stuff. So a lot of people just turn off the comments anyway. So, uh, so yeah, so, so it's there. That's what it is. That's what it's for. Um, I don't really mess with it a whole lot. Okay. The appearance area. Uh, so appearance is where a lot of people are going to spend a lot of time when they're first getting their website up and running. Uh, so it'll default to the themes area. So these are all the themes that I currently have installed on this WordPress site. And uh, only one obviously can be active at a time. So right now I have this 2021 activated. And then uh, if I want to activate uh, a different one, like change, basically dramatically change the way my website looks, I can go ahead and just activate any one of these. And then when I refresh my website, it will look way different. Uh, and that's what a theme is supposed to do. And that's the great thing about a content management system and WordPress in general is that it separates the actual content and functionality of your site from the way that it looks and feels. Um, and so that's a beautiful thing because if you ever get tired of the web, way your website looks, you can just switch to a different theme and not have to like completely rebuild your site like you used to have to before content management systems. Um, it's great. And, uh, and so, uh, yeah, you could just try all sorts of themes out until you find one that you like and then uh, you can customize it. And, and that's kind of what themes are. Um, we'll get more into themes in a future meetup, I'm sure. Um, but, and we talk about themes a lot in WP Omaha because you have a lot of power in your themes. You know, that's where a lot of your customization of the site, putting your logo in there and stuff like that, that all happens with the theme. Um, when we go to customize, uh, that's a tool that allows us to customize essentially the theme. Um, and so if we wanted to say, give our site a logo, we could go to, uh, no, it's probably under general settings and then site icon. And we can click site icon and we could upload, I don't know, uh, one of these logos, I guess. And we can tell it how big we want. Oh, hold on. This is a different type of thing. I think this is for the different themes have different stuff that you can add. Yeah. So this is just for the favicon up there. 
Uh, so that's that's basically telling it, hey, this is what your favicon is going to look like, and we can publish that. The site, oh, here's the logo right here. Duh, site logo. Boom. There you go. Awesome. Publish. All right, cool. And then now when we refresh the page, uh, you'll see we've got our favicon is now up here, and also our logo is up here. Uh, it still doesn't look all that great because the colors are all messed up, but we can obviously edit that stuff as well. Uh, you can go into additional CSS and write CSS to change colors. If you know how to write CSS, if you don't know CSS, you should learn CSS. This is very easy to learn. Um, I don't know that this theme in particular has a whole lot of places to edit the color. Every theme is different. Um, oh, theme editor. Here we go. Nope, never mind. Go back. That is not what we wanted. I don't see a place to edit the colors of this theme. So you would have to only do it with CSS, unfortunately. With more expensive themes, they have a big robust settings area where you can go change the color, the colors for all the different things like color for the header, background color for the header, text color for the header, um, background color for the body, text color for the body, so on and so forth to be a bunch of settings so that you don't have to do any kind of uh, CSS or anything like that. Um, but this theme, since it's free, doesn't have any of that. Uh, let's go on to widgets. We're running short on time. It's already 7-11. I'm trying to fly relatively quickly because um, this is only an hour long. Uh, widgets are essentially modules that you can put in areas that are called sidebars. And so I don't know. Yeah, so basically this over here on the right is a sidebar of ours. And so if we want to put custom content into that sidebar, we could just go grab like this text one here and we'll put it at the top so it's easy to find and then we can say uh, do space and we'll just say uh, thank you all for attending this webinar I hope you learn a lot and we can just save that and then go back to this page and refresh then now you can see up here at the very top, it says do space. Thank you all for attending this webinar. I hope you all learn a lot. Okay. So that's kind of what sidebars are for. You can, and, and widgets, you can like kind of create these like little areas of your website where you could take these modules and put them into the areas and just set up just areas that will kind of like always be there, kind of static, static areas that you could put on like a bunch of different pages and whatnot. Cool. The menus area is where we set up menus. Right now, we don't have a menu. Uh, we could create a menu by just saying, hey, I want to create my main menu, which is like obviously the menu that goes along the top of the website. Uh, so we could say create menu, and then we can just tell it what we want our menu to be. So we can add a link to our homepage, and we could uh, create a, a link to our blog. And then uh, if we had a contact us page, we might put like a contact us in here. And then we just tell it where we want this to uh, display. And so obviously this is our main menu. So we just put it in the main menu area because you have multiple menu locations in WordPress. And then when we refresh our page, you'll see that up here, it just says home and blog because this is the main menu area up here. And that's the only two items we told it to put in there. So that's how the menu system works. You can set up sub menu items if you want. Um, so we could say like, uh, I'm gonna put another link. This doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I just don't have a lot of pages in here to work with. Just run with me here, people. Um, so we can create sub menu items like that. Um, even though in this situation, it doesn't make a lot of sense because the sub menu link sends us to the same place as the top link. Um, but yeah, so this is how we can do like sub menu stuff like that. And it still sends us to the same place. Although I don't know why, what? Why does it not like, why does it not like this page? I was just here. The blog is broken. Oh no, the blog is broken. I don't know what's going on with the blog. That's weird. Well, let's just pretend we didn't see that. <laughs> All right, so we'll keep it moving. Um, anyway, uh, Let's see, header, I don't know what header, oh, this is just a link to go to the customizer straight to the header area, got it, okay. That's what they put there. With themes, you can add your own custom menu areas. Same with plugins too. When you install a plugin or a theme, you might get like menu items over here that weren't there originally. So like this one, for instance, I could tell that this is a custom one that's been added by the theme. 
um, and then the theme editor is one, and then this header one is another one. The background is probably another one. These were probably all added by our theme when we installed and activated the theme. So yeah, so themes and plugins can like change this menu area over here, but they normally won't like remove things. It'll usually just be adding new menu areas in there so that you can get to the custom pages that come with the plugin or the theme or whatever. Cool. Speaking of plugins, here's where we manage all of our plugins, like Elementor. So if we wanted to reactivate Elementor, we do that there. You can see the current version of Elementor is out of date. WordPress has a uh, plugin management system built into it. And so uh, whenever your plugins get out of date, it'll give you like this little thing and allow you to update them. And so I could just click update now. Now it's reaching out to where the Elementor code is stored on the internet pulling down all of the new code, replacing the old code with the new code that it's getting from the internet. And then eventually the little circle will stop spinning and we'll have the latest version of Elementor available to us um, that easy. Uh, hopefully, there we go. Yes, cool. So now it's updated and now we're on version 2.9.14 and our plugin is no longer out of date. It is important to keep your plugins um, up to date for a number of reasons. The most important reason probably being security. Uh, a lot of times plugins will update themselves um, or they create updates for the plugin to patch security issues in the plugin. Um, now, obviously this doesn't happen very often, um, but if you have like a five-year-old WordPress site and you never updated any of your plugins, you might wanna go check on that uh, because that can definitely be a, a hole in your security uh, that you're not aware of. Uh, we can add new plugins. When we click add new, it takes us to the plugin repository. Uh, this is the same also for uh, the themes as well. When we go to themes, we can add a new theme the same way. And there's a theme repository as well. And then we can just search through here for whatever we want. Um, so this is how we found Elementor originally. We just went in here, we typed Elementor, we click search, and then boom, Elementor page builder comes up. And you can see it doesn't even allow me to install it because it already knows it's active. Um, or installed. Um, but we can go look up all sorts of things. Google has some plugins in here, one called Google Site Kit. Um, and so that's a good one. And so we can just click install now and it'll automatically put it on your WordPress site and it's that easy, bing, bang, boom. You've got new functionality on your WordPress site uh, with very few clicks. Um, that's the beautiful thing about WordPress site and the plugin system is that you, that allows you to transform WordPress into whatever kind of a site you need. For instance, if you're going to sell stuff on WordPress, you might want to look into a little plugin called WooCommerce. And so this is the most popular e-commerce plugin. Notice how it has five, more than 5 million active installations. And uh, we can install this plugin on the site and start selling stuff on our website. It's that simple. Um, so anything you want to do on your website, you want sliders, you want videos, anything. You can just search in here and find plugins that somebody's made that will add that functionality to your website if it doesn't already have it. Another uh, really big one is Yoast SEO. If you just type in SEO, like you want to make sure you have search engine optimization on your website, boom. Notice how Yoast comes up first because it's the most popular. Uh, you'll find other ones here. You can choose whichever one you want do some research, find which one is best, go ahead and install and activate it. And then you've got SEO on your website and every plugin has its own settings area. So you can configure the plugin to behave however you want it to behave. Uh, WordPress also has a fully functioning user management system, which is also awesome. So if I want to delegate a certain amount of access to my WordPress site, to anybody else, I can go ahead and just click add new and add a user to the site with their email address and username and all this stuff. And I can make all this stuff up and I can have it automatically come up with a password for them. And then it'll send them an email saying that they now have access to our website. Although many times those go to spam. So be careful when you're doing that. Make sure you tell people that you do this too. Hey, I just gave you access to my site. If you didn't get an email, check your spam folder. That's very common, just a little pro tip there. Um, and then you can also assign them a role. So different roles have different levels of access to um, WordPress. And if you want them to have the same amount of access that you have as a site owner, you're going to want to click administrator here. So administrator means that they have access to the entire website and they can do whatever they want. So this is like the most like God mode user 
level user role. And then the, on the other side of the spectrum is a subscriber. They have the least amount of control over WordPress. Uh, let's see, no other questions so far. Feel free to ask any questions, anybody, if you have them. Uh, we are already at the 720 mark, so we only have 10 minutes left. Uh, so please, if you have any questions about anything related to WordPress, if I haven't covered anything that you were hoping that I would cover, please use the question and answer area in Zoom or the chat. Uh, I will answer any questions in either scenario. Um, okay, so that's the user management system. Let's go down to tools. We kind of already went over the import export. Um, that's mostly it actually. Uh, you'll find other things added to tools if you install plugins that add more tools. Um, but right out of the box, this is kind of, this is mostly what it is. You can go to some of this other stuff like site health or whatever. Um, it's just going to give you a report on, you know, what's going on with your site and how you can improve things. Um, that's, that's basically that. The settings area gets quite deep. I'm not going to go through all of this, but this is probably one of the most important pages of your WordPress site. This is where you set up what the URL for your site is. Uh, what the tagline for your site is, what the title of your site is. So like if I, you know, for, you know, WP Omaha, I would want it to say WP Omaha. Notice how it changes it real time up here in the top left. Um, but in this case, we're just going to stick with do space. And then um, the admin, the admin email is set here. Um, you know, if you want other people to be able to register on your website, you could check that. Um, there's just a bunch of stuff, time zone for your company so on and so forth. There's just a bunch of things you could set up in here. We go to writing, we go to reading. Probably the most important thing that I like to tell people about and as far as like people that just got started using WordPress is this setting right here under settings, reading. When you first install WordPress and get WordPress up and running, the default setting for this is your latest post. Because keep in mind that WordPress is first and foremost a blogging platform. That's how it got started. So they always assume that you're trying to spin up a blog. Why? I don't know. Maybe still a lot of people use it for blogs. I have no idea, but I've never created a blog with it. I always create websites. If you're trying to create a website and not a blog, the first thing you need to do after you get WordPress up and running is you need to go into settings and reading and then change this setting from your latest posts to a static page. This is basically what you want your homepage to be. If you leave it like this, the only content that's going to show up on your homepage is a list of all of your blog posts. If you want it to be a page that you manage in the pages area, you need to create a homepage first. So create a page called home and then set that to this. And then if you want a blog page, you create a page called blog and then set the post page to your blog. Once you do this, your website will start operating like a normal, like e-commerce or marketing website or whatever. That's probably the most important setting if you guys come away with anything in terms of settings for WordPress. If you only remember one out of this whole thing, remember this one right here. I wish they put it up in a more obvious place. Maybe they will in the future, I don't know, but this is extremely important. Uh, discussion, these are just settings about how people comment on your WordPress site, since I told you comments aren't really that great. Um, you know, you can worry about this or not worry about this, just depends on if you leverage comments or not. Uh, media, I normally never mess with this, probably leave the default settings. Permalinks, usually it's set to post name, that's what you want for the default setting. And then privacy, yeah, you don't really need to worry about this either. This is just your privacy policy page. I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, you might need to dive into it at some point, but it's not really like a, you need to know this right away when you get started with WordPress type thing. All right, cool. I've kind of gone through everything in here. Let's go ahead and address some questions here. The first one I saw pop up is from uh, Cindy. Will I be able to access a recording of this webinar? I don't think they currently have this thing recording. Um, I'm not sure. It looks like it's recording. I see the record icon going. Um, it says recording to the cloud. So my guess is yes, there's a recording. Um, I think you will just have to ask somebody from DoSpace how you can get the recording. I don't work for DoSpace. I'm just somebody that knows way too much about WordPress. So contact DoSpace and ask them for a link to this webinar and I'm sure they will be able to get you one. But great question, Cindy. Oh, look, they, somebody from Do Space is on here and answered it for me. Cool, awesome. Uh, let's go to the next question. 
Uh, do you have any recommendations on securing our WordPress sites? Yes, I do, Greg. Great question. I hope you don't mind me calling you Greg instead of Gregory. Um, yes, so plugins. If you wanna secure your WordPress site, you need to get security plugins. Oh, whoops, <laughs> that only searches through what we already have installed. You have to click add new first, then go to search. Um, yeah. We'll probably find WordPress. Yep, WordFence comes up top. Yep, so you can use WordFence. That's a good one. If you don't already have that installed, check WordFence out. It's a great security plugin. There's also the all-in-one WordPress security and firewall. I've used this one before as well. I've used both of these. They're both very good. There's a number of other ones here. I would just say go to plugins, type in security, see what comes up, install whichever one you think looks the best. Uh, when you're installing plugins, just make sh look at a few things. <coughs> I will tell you three things to look at when you're looking at plugins. Look at the last updated. How long has it been since it was last updated? If it's recent, that's a good sign. If it's like two years ago, not a good sign. Look at the stars, okay? If it's a lot of stars and a lot of submissions of reviews, that's a good sign. Um, also, look at how many active installations there are. If it only has 20 active installations or 50 active installations, that's not a good sign. If you're up in the hundreds of thousands or in the millions, that's a pretty good sign. So we can see these two top ones right here are a good look. You know, this is one week ago, 900,000. This is good. This one would be good. And the farther down we scroll, you know, we might see some worse ones. I don't see anything terribly alarming right out of the gate on this front page. This one only has 3,000 and only 12 reviews. And the last time it was updated was two months ago. So it's eh, kind of not as good as probably some of these other ones up here. Um, yeah, that's what I would say is uh, do that. Also, make sure you make your username and password for your admin accounts strong, okay? And then also a lot of these security plugins will allow you to change what the URL is that you go to to log in as admin. That's also a good idea. Um, right now, I just went to WP admin and that's where my login was. That's not the best idea because bots know to look there for the admin area and to start spamming on the uh, login area. And if a bot can get logged into your WordPress site, that's the easiest way to get hacked. Uh, but great question. Um, you're probably asking that because you probably heard that WordPress is somewhat insecure. Um, the reason why that is, is because WordPress now makes up roughly 35% of the internet. Um, so if I was a hacker and I was trying to get in, I was trying to hack as many websites as possible, I would go to the most popular system to build websites on. And that most popular system is WordPress. So WordPress is just a primary target for hackers because it's so popular. Um, let's see, Jan, what training resources do you recommend as I get started with WordPress? Uh, that's a good question. Um, there's many out there, so it's hard to pinpoint exactly one. Uh, WordPress.org is a great place to go because there are lots of, there's lots of documentation here. Uh, so you can go to support and documentation and they'll have a bunch of, you know, you getting started, installing, basic usage, blah, blah, blah. Basically a lot of the things that I covered today, you can go look up in writing here. Um, also, there's like uh, some blogs out there that are really good, like WP Beginner. Beginner, do I know how to spell? I feel like I can spell. Okay, so yeah, WP Beginner is a great blog for lots of articles with, um, with just all sorts of things related to WordPress. And it's not just for beginners, they have other good articles on other cool WordPress tips as well. Um, another place I like to tell people about is WP Tavern. However, this is more of a news type website. So this is all news related to WordPress. So if you wanna keep up to date on the latest with greatest with what's changing and going on with WordPress in general, this is a great blog to go to and stay tuned on that. I'm a YouTube guy, so I like to watch YouTube channels. Uh, like I said, we've got WP Omaha and WordCamp Omaha. I would recommend you subscribe to these and watch some of our videos on here. Um, otherwise, I mean, you can just go to, you know, WordPress Learning and find all sorts of channels on here uh, that teach you all sorts of stuff about WordPress. Um, 
I, I love YouTube. I watch YouTube literally every day on my lunch break and it's always educational stuff. So um, I hope that's enough to help get you started. Um, also, I would encourage you to join our meetup and come to some of our meetups and learn from that. Otherwise, um, you know, I'm, I'm very much all for people um, learning from their own experience. So in my opinion, the best way to learn about WordPress is to just spin up a site and start playing with it um, and learn from experience. That would be my best, um, my best advice for you. Um, cool. Awesome. Let's see. Great info. Thanks. Okay. Yada, yada. All right. Um, do we have any other questions about WordPress? It's now 730. Uh, so it's been exactly 55 minutes since we started because we started five minutes late to let everybody get in. We still have 14 attendees, so that's great. I'm glad I didn't bore anybody to death. Um, either that or you guys are just listening to this in the background while you watch American Idol, which is perfectly fine. I don't mind that. Um, but, yeah, thank you for sticking around, everybody. Uh, again, my name is Rob Ruiz. You can look me up on LinkedIn. I have no problem with that whatsoever. If you have ever, ever have any questions, want to, uh, you know, need help with anything, if you need a website built, if you need my expertise, look me up on LinkedIn. I will put my LinkedIn link in the chat here. And uh, you can go ahead and click on that. Uh, if you need to contact me about anything or have any questions or anything like that, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn or add me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm a pretty popular guy. I'm just saying, you know, a lot of people know who I am. Uh, so, yeah, 500 plus connections, you know, just saying. I'm just saying, people, I am that guy. Um, but yeah, no, I, I love helping people learn WordPress. That's why I lead the WP Omaha group and it's completely voluntary that I do that. So I love teaching people. Um, I love helping people learn and empowering people to do cool stuff on the web, uh, whether it be with WordPress or not. Um, that's kind of why I'm obsessed with content management systems is that they allow people to um, build things on the web without knowing how to program or code or anything like that. Uh, did I miss a question here? No, it's just people thanking me for my time. Well, you are all extremely welcome. I want to thank all of you for attending this webinar. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm getting really hungry now because I started dinner right before um, this webinar. And everybody, they're like the rest of my family is upstairs eating it all without me. So hopefully they leave some for me uh, because I cooked it all. And it smells delicious. Um, I've just been sitting here smelling the results of my cooking for like the last hour while I talk to you guys about WordPress. So my mouth is starting to water. Um, yeah, you're all very welcome. Thank you all much, very much for attending uh, this webinar. Uh, you can stay tuned to do space. I do lots of webinars for do space. Um, so go ahead and feel free to join us for the next one. Um, and again, uh, feel free to join our meetup group at meetup.com slash WP dash Omaha. I'll put a link to that in here as well. I'll put a link to WPOmaha.org in the chat as well. Um, can't think of any other links. Uh, our YouTube channel, I guess, the WP Omaha YouTube channel. Please subscribe to us. We are only at 87 subscribers. We need 100 to get our own custom URL. Until then, we get this weird channel slash some randomly generated string. So, uh, so yeah, subscribe to us on, on YouTube uh, and, and catch meetups that way. Um, yeah, that's it, everybody. Uh, yeah, and unless anybody has any other questions, I'll hang around for like one more minute. Um, and, uh, and yeah, thank you all very much for attending. Have a good night. Happy Thursday. Stay safe out there in the, uh, in the COVIDness. Wash your hands. Um, yeah, thank you all very much. Thank you. And good luck using WordPress. It's very powerful. I've built my entire career on it and I make a pretty good living now. All right. Thank you much. Have a good night.